Hello, welcome to We Are Westwood, and I am Ralph Schmidt, principal of Westwood High School, and we're broadcasting today from the studios here at Red Hawk TV. And what we want to do through We Are Westwood, it's an introductory program to talk about the, the monthly, to talk about the things that we're doing here at Westwood High School. And we just want to be able to spotlight and get the good news about our school out there and do it through this uh, program called We Are Westwood. Uh, with me today, I have a couple of special guests. And uh, today we're going to be talking about our Convergence Media program, which is uh, the program that, that is providing this opportunity to, for us to do uh, this program as well as many other programs. Good morning, and welcome to the Red Hawk Report. This greeting awakens the Red Hawks to the morning news show, just one part of the Convergence Media Program at Westwood High School. The purpose of this very modern and cutting-edge program is to serve the students, staff, and Blythewood community with a source of information and a voice to what is occurring in the school. Ninth grade students are introduced to journalism and media production through Journalism One. The real action, however, begins in the second year, when students choose to follow a path of newspaper and yearbook production, news and sports broadcasting, or photojournalism. These students are running the program just like a real newsroom, and learning skills that are crucial to the 21st century in our modern workplace. News and sports broadcasters produce a 15-minute morning news show four days a week. It isn't your typical morning news show. It's the news of Westwood, with video clips and packages, interviews, and photos. With multiple sets, the studio can change to fit the show. But it isn't always serious. We love to bring some of the unique and crazy news of the world. But let's not forget the weather. We have our own weather station and are now beginning to report on the weather. Broadcast students face daily deadlines and need to have everything ready for a successful day. But we don't stop with the morning news show. We produce a number of field programs. Right from football and volleyball in the fall. Brown and Vincent. Oh, he's running. He's going. running. He's running. He's running. He's in the end zone. Shoot. <laughs> Done by. To basketball and wrestling in the winter. Oh, well, the pass is stolen by Halloween. Yeah, there we go. You can feel it. Chest on chest. Let's lift that head up. Big man wins here. Big man Let's wins. Let's lift that head up. And all those spring sports. Last year during one of our sports broadcasts, I got a tweet from an ESPN blogger saying that he liked the way I was talking about the game and everything and saying that I was a good commentator and that ESPN should sign me up. And it's just really cool and special. It made me thinking about, it made me start thinking about doing sports broadcasting as a real, you know, career field. We also cover events like dance and drama performances and Miss and Mr. Westwood. Our latest project is our webpage, Now or News of Westwood. We needed a space to let people know what is going on at our school, but also to showcase the great work of our reporters as well as our photographers. The photographers bring the activities of our school to life through their work, which can also be found in the halls, on the TV screens, and in local newspapers. We are often called on to go to this or that to shoot photos or video, just like Hello. a professional media program. All day long, we work on our assignments and special projects. Going to Charleston and shooting video was a great opportunity and being able to provide video for the collaboration with the drama and dance program for their production is great. It was a great experience. In the journalism classroom, editors brainstorm story ideas for the next edition of the newspaper and the yearbook. Staff writers put the finishing touches on their stories while designers create attention-grabbing layouts and place the highest quality photos. Always on a deadline, the yearbook and newspaper staff work as a team to produce top-notch publications. Just because the dismissal bell rings at 345 doesn't mean our work stops. We are a 24-hour program that doesn't shut down. Staff take home laptops and other equipment so they can shoot photos, develop the morning news show for the next day, edit video, or design newspaper and yearbook spreads all with the common goal to produce high-quality pieces and promote the values of Westwood High School in the Westwood, Blythewood, and Columbia communities. 
I would like to introduce the broadcast and photojournalism teacher, Lynn Washington, and news and sports director, Jared Heydrich. Ms. Washington, how do you see this, in, this program impacting Westwood High School? Well, I have been amazed, uh, Mr. Smith, in the year plus that we have had this program, the great strides that we have made. Um, most of our students came to this program having no background at all in video production or photojournalism. And I think you just have to look around the school and see the impact that we've had. You walk down the halls and you see all the great photographs that were taken last year. Uh, the morning news show, which is 15 minutes, as the video said, um, is a great tribute to the hard work of the students. But it really brings to light all the things that are going on at the school. Um, and I'm particularly proud of the role that we have played um, with the core values because every Tuesday, is Core Value Tuesday. And um, either awards are presented or messages from teachers or other people um, to the students about our five core values. Uh, so I think we have made a tremendous impact on the school um, to develop the culture of the school and I think we will continue to do that as well. And you know, I, I, I agree. I think so much comes out of this program for our kids and it's, it's exciting to see. Jared, as a student, uh, what skills do you think you're learning that you're gonna carry on from this into either in the college or in the life? I think the number one skill that we're really all learning is professionalism. Uh, we all have the opportunity to go out and meet people that we've never met before. And it's all about that first impression and the professionalism that you present. Also, another thing is leadership. Leadership is key, and I think that's really a big thing that we learn. And if I may go back to what she was saying, one of the main goals of this program is to give the Blythewood community a voice out of the school and to help um, like encourage the Westwood Way values in not only the Westwood community, but also the Blythewood and even the greater Columbia community. And Jared, you're exactly right. I've seen, I've seen you grow as a leader in, in this, and it's amazing to watch you as well as all the rest of our staff as they, as they produce and do the fine things and get the word out there. It's an incredible program. Ms. Washington, where do you, think, where do you see us going with uh, Convergence Media? Because it, it is definitely here to stay. Yeah, I, I've been just so happy to see. Um, I mentioned the things we do inside the school, but Jared is one of our key leaders in um, our broadcast program program our what we call field production and you know we've done well this Friday will be our third football game we have broadcast two volleyball games we're doing the gullah gumbo that people will hear about uh, later in this program um, so you know I think we're going to want to continue all of those things and become more refined I mean I think as time goes on the quality of the work of the students as they develop their skills more is going to get better and better and better in the programs um, and the opportunities for the students will increase as well. That is awesome. I tell you, it, 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 this excites me uh, just to, to no end, uh, to know that we have our students and we're using this to really get a lot of great things out there to the, to the Blythewood community. And, and I also believe that, that these are skills, um, Jared mentioned some of them, but the idea of timeliness and deadlines, um, they're all 21st century skills, mm -hmm. which no matter if the student is going into some area related to this or they're going into something totally different, um, they're going to take those skills with them and it's going to have a huge impact on their future in college, mm -hmm. in the military, in their profession, whatever it might be. And I do want to mention that this entire program is student run with an advisor and I think that that's amazing that we're, we have this ability to do a 15 minute morning news show and to go out in the field and broadcast all these things. It's really amazing that it's all student run. Yeah, and, and what amazes me is the confidence level of our students and just seeing them when they come in and after a year their confidence level have just, just grown and blossomed and I think that really helps not only in this program but across the whole school and, and it's just gonna help them grow to be those great 21st century people we know. Convergence Media is an academic elective program here at Westwood High School. We have also been working to build our academic programs here by offering more advanced placement courses for our students. Joining me is Assistant Principal Pasquale Bates, our AP Coordinator, Kendra Whitney who teaches both Chemistry and AP uh, Environmental Science, and our senior is Barbara Dinkins who is a uh, AP Government and AP Literature student here at Westwood. Ms. Bates, I have a question. 
you know, what AP courses do we now offer our students here? Um, we offer quite a few. We offer AP Psychology, AP Studio Art, we offer AP English Literature, AP English Language, Government, European, European History, Calculus AB, um, Statistics, and environmental science, <laughs> in chemistry, and biology. Great. So we're looking to add new courses each and every year. We Absolutely. want to grow our advanced placement course. Absolutely. So with knowing that we want to get more students involved and really grow these programs, what are we doing to ensure that we can help our students be successful? Yes. Well, we are definitely, we want that to be the end goal for them to be successful. We have ordered some additional study resources for them this year. Um, five steps to being successful on the AP exam. Um, we've also ordered some Princeton and Barron study guides for the students. The teachers offer study additional study sessions um, on the weekends, after school, before school, and at lunch. Um, and we also have a lot of AP resources online yeah. that the, the teachers and the students use. So I think it's safe to say that, that, that we're giving all the support that we can to make each and every student successful as they venture into that world of AP. Absolutely. And, and I just think it's awesome that our students Students are ready to take that. Uh, Ms. Whitney, you, you know, we've offered uh, a number of courses this year. Uh, why should students take an advanced placement course? Um, there are two big reasons that I can think of. The first one is um, improving their chances for success in college. Um, AP is a rigorous um, coursework. We provide textbooks similar to what they're going to see. We're providing questions worded in ways that they're going to see it and teaching time management skills. How am I going to fit all of this stuff into a daily um, regime? And then the second one is marketability. Colleges are looking for students who are taking those advanced courses, um, who, are, who are challenging themselves and, and meeting those challenges. Um, and in addition to that, there are some scholarships um, APs that AP students are eligible for that other students may not um, meet the demands for. Yeah, and in addition, they can they can earn college credit if they Absolutely. take the advanced placement course, do well. If the university or college accept it, then they can move on. Absolutely. As a parent, I had a daughter who uh, took uh, 27 hours at Clemson University, and uh, I can tell you one of the greatest things she told me is that she was prepared for that rigor of yeah. college work in in those classrooms. So, Absolutely. Uh, hats off to our teachers who uh, <laughs> who really provide that uh, special opportunity. Now we've offered a new course. Uh, this year, uh, environmental science. Yes. Tell me a little bit about the AP Environmental Science. AP Environmental Science is a hands-on labs-based science. Um, they were heading outside and the students are having an opportunity to look at and analyze both their um, local, regional, and even state and global-wide environments to look at the issues and how can they fix those issues. What is it that we're doing and what could we do a little bit better? Great. That's awesome. And Barbara, you're joining us as a student, and you know, I think sometimes we as adults, you know, tell students why they should do things, and you know, we try to give our experiences there, but I want you to tell us why is it important for students to, to possibly take uh, an AP course? What would you say to students about taking an advanced placement course? Well, um, my freshman year of high school, I didn't have the chance to take AP classes, and it's kind of overwhelming when you're a freshman, you're like, oh my gosh, there's all these hard classes, all these smart kids are in. Like, am I gonna do well? And you compare yourself to them. But my sophomore year, all my friends were taking AP World, and I was like, you know, this is a good class. Like, I, I can do this, I can, excel, I can excel in this class and have a successful career in this class. And then my junior year, I took three AP classes, and I loved it. Like, I just love being able to be challenged like that. I just love having the mindset that I can do this. Like, I can, I can be a, great, a better student and I can just make my career better in high school. And um, my senior year, I took two. I'm taking two, and um, that's six in total. And it seems like a lot, but it just makes colleges look at me better over some students who took uh, CP classes. Like, it's, it's just a boost, and it, it helps a lot, so. That is awesome. Do you, do you feel like it's helped with your confidence level yes. as a student? Yes, yes. I feel like, I don't feel like I'm better than anyone else, because, no, that's not a good feeling, but I just feel like, you know, I can help someone if they need help with anything because I have that mind, like I just have, I'm trying to find the right word. Oh, it's not coming to me. I just, I don't know, I feel better confident. Prepared. Yes, I feel better prepared. Like I can help anyone who needs help. 
Yeah, and that confidence really is is what we try to foster in a lot of places. And I'm glad to hear that that you're getting it through some advanced placement courses because ultimately our goal is to help get you prepared and every student prepared for that rigor of college. And so it sounds like to me you're right on target and going to do very well. I hope so. <laughs> well, we appreciate what you're doing, and and, and as you all know, uh, advanced placement is is something very near and dear to my heart. I want to make sure that each and every uh, senior has the opportunity to at least try one advanced placement course before uh, they leave Westwood and hit the doors of, of the colleges. So thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Academics certainly are the focus of our school, but we know activities and athletics play a role in developing each student. Each month we are going to highlight a student athlete. Our first student athlete is, uh, that we're featuring this, uh, this month is our cross country runner, Eric Lewis. Being athlete of the month at Westwood is no easy accomplishment. You have to demonstrate the core values and be great in your sport. This month's athlete does just that. My name is Eric Lewis and I'm a junior. Holding the title of the first Westwood athlete to qualify for state in any sport, Lewis has excelled in just two years of running cross country. After making the transition to Westwood his sophomore year, Lewis was encouraged by his mom to go out for cross country. He was a natural at it and qualified for the state meet. Although he didn't win, he saw it as a great experience and a goal of his before he leaves Westwood. Win region as a team and hopefully I can uh, win region individually and just, uh, just bring a state championship to the Westwood would be a, a great honor for me. Now, in his junior year, Eric, a veteran on the team and as captain, leads by example. He has run his best time ever this year, and that is just on the field. Off the field, he helps his teammates set goals, work on their running, and encourages them as well. When he's not practicing or running in a meet, Eric has his mind on academics. Oh, it's always priorities first. I always make sure that I need to do my homework, my schoolwork, make sure I get my grades right. So in the end, I can just run. Eric has made his mark here at Westwood so far and only looks to get better. The future looks bright for this Athlete of the Month. Another part of our curriculum is our Outstanding Fine Arts program. Many of our offerings in this area combine classroom work with out-of-class performances. One of those areas is our drama and dance program. At the end of this month, they presented the original production of Gullah Gumbo, Stories and Songs of the Sea Islands. Dr. Ann Richardson is director of both our dance and drama programs. Dr. Richardson, where did the idea for this performance come from? It really came from a casual conversation that I was having with the students. We had gotten back from a field trip in Charleston and we just started talking about it and just talking about the Gullah culture and the, the you know, seagrass ladies that we'd seen making the baskets. And a lot of the students said, oh, I've got family from there. Oh, my grandfather speaks Gullah. And really it just came from a conversation with the students. They, it sparked an interest. And I thought, okay, well, maybe we could do a, a show. I had wanted to do an original production and now I had my topic. How really great that our kids got involved in it and they had some real connections uh, you know, to the Gullah uh, culture and uh, that is just awesome. Well, what, what was your process for creating this original show? Well, and it's quite a process. Um, I started in the summer, I started doing research myself so to prepare for it, and I found Gullah Stories, uh, they have such a wonderful, uh, such a wonderful uh, category, group of stories to tell, folk stories, that you understand the culture, you understand the student, the, the, the people, how they think. And so they st I started reading the stories. I picked some stories that I thought would translate well. Got to school, and the students divided themselves into groups. They read the stories, and they had, and it was really like learning another language, yeah. because uh, the the Gullah language is a kind of a hybrid of African and American English. So we had to get vocabulary books. We had several teachers um, here at Westwood that loaned us some books that we could use. So they had to translate the stories, and they had to do the plot line. They'd figure out the plot line. Then I brought in my dear friend, Barbara Thompson. Mm -hmm. She and I had collaborated in the past. She worked with the students on writing the script. So my Drama 3 and Drama 2 students wrote the scripts. One of the things that we had to do, we didn't want it just to be a series of stories, so we had to find an overarching story that would connect the two. And in the process of our research, research was a big component, we found out that there were two ladies from Pennsylvania who came down to St. Helena's Island 
to start a school to teach the freed slaves reading and writing. And we decided that they were having trouble understanding the Gullah language. So the two ladies go to Mom Bess, uh, who teaches them about, teaches them some sayings. Uh, we glad for see Una. That's how you greet people. And she tells all of the stories, and we introduce the dancing into it too. And I really just kind of started from there, brought in some guest artists to work with the students on African dance. Uh, let's see, Venetia Stribling came in from Condor Elementary School. Terrence Henderson came in and worked with them on the African dancing. So um, we rehearsed, uh, let's see, I think the rehearsal period was about seven weeks, yeah. very intense, mm -hmm. and um, worked very hard. The students did a magnificent job. I think the most fun part about this, because it was their show, we could make changes as we were working, and I have to say this, Stephanie was kind of clowning around one day, and she did something very funny that I don't want to say, because it's how we finished the show. So I think they got involved in the creative process. They did the research, the writing, the creativity, and um, with her just clowning around, came up with something that was absolutely perfect, the perfect way to end the show. So um, it was just a wonderful experience all around with the students. And, um, and with our guest artists. They were very complimentary of the students. Well, that's awesome. And, you know, we always want our kids to show well, but what excites me is our kids actually got their hands in there. They did the work, they did the research, and, and it was guided by just a, a cast of wonderful people. Uh, and it, I was glad you mentioned Barbara Thompson, yes. who's also a great friend of mine, <laughs> and, uh, and she is phenomenal. So having all these guest artists, people come and work with our kids uh, was great, and our students are, are incredible. And I see you brought Stephanie Seabrook uh, with you, and Stephanie is uh, playing the lead role of Mom Bess, and uh, Stephanie, we're glad to have you here. Tell us what has playing this role of Mom Bess really meant to you. Um, it's been a lot to me because um, not only has it helped me grow as an actor, it's helped me grow as a playwright because this year was our first time actually getting hands-on and taking this plot line that we had started a really long time ago and actually starting to write down and understand that it's not only just like writing, we had to do the research and it helped me grow as a person because being the lead person, you have to not only make the show your own, you have to make it so everyone understands not only your character, but all the other ones. And I think we did a really good job on it because every single, I think every single rehearsal we've grown a lot. Every single rehearsal we've um, changed some stuff. We've learned you know, what we need to do better and we've, we've really grown a lot. Not only the actors, but the dancers are really making the show a great, great show, not just for the like acting part of it and the dialogue, but they're making their dances just shine with the gullah and it's amazing. Well, I tell you what, I know it is, and uh, I can see the excitement uh, that you have for this. And what really excites me is it really fits well with our ideas of wanting to teach our students about research. And in the arts is a place where you can absolutely find research and going and doing some of the authentic work, uh, you know, to find the history of, of things that happen right here in South Carolina. So uh, I, I appreciate both of you, and thank you for all the hard work aspects of our school is the Westwood Way values. The School Improvement Council helped to develop these last year. They are respect, responsibility, empathy, integrity, and community. We talk a lot about them and encourage our students and staff to live by these each and every day. On the Morning News Show, we give awards to students and teachers that show these values through their actions. The Morning News Show staff also prepares messages and lately ads to illustrate those values. Let's look at one of those ads. Hey Ralph, yes we at Westwood really enjoy working with the community. We raised over 150 pints of blood with Red Cross, we worked with the Harvest Hope Food Bank and raised over 12,000 cans, and we helped children in the community with the Harvest Festival. Yes, it's something all our students really enjoy getting involved with. Yes, it's been great. Who are you on the phone with? Ralph from Westwood. Ralph from Westwood at 3 in the morning? Yes. Who is this? Ralph from Westwood. What are you wearing, Ralph from Westwood? Uh, brown slacks and a white shirt. She sounds hideous. Well, she's a guy. <laughs> The value of community is huge. We have an organization known as Westwood Serves. That organization is a community service projects for our school. Sharia Wilson, our school to work coordinator, is in charge of our first major service project for the year. 
Mrs. Wilson, could you tell us a little bit about Westwood Serves and Brett's Rainbow? Sure. Westwood Serves is the community service and service learning aspect of work-based learning. And yes, our first big Westwood Serves event is coming up this Saturday, October 26th. Brett's Rainbow is an organization out of Palmetto Health, and it is designed to help grieving children between the ages of 5 and 18. And they will be here this Saturday. And by the way, this Saturday is um, National Make a Difference Day. And so I'm so proud that we have about 70 students um, here at Westwood High School who will be volunteering and serving for the, you know, 12, that's a 12 hour day. They're here from seven until seven. Um, and what, what excites me about it is that these students are excited to come mm -hmm. and serve. They know that there's, uh, all that's in it for them is, is, is getting the community service hours. But there was even more enthusiasm last week when we had our training for Brett's mm -hmm. Rainbow. Um, the more they heard about what it would mean to these kids to give of themselves and to serve, many of them who had only initially signed up for about four or five hours, you know, were excited to come and, oh, can I change my application? I think I want to stay the whole day. And, you know, of course, I said to them, remember, this is a Saturday. This is your day off. You're going to give up your whole day to come out and serve these kids. And many of them said yes. So, you know, it just warmed my heart to see that we have students that, at this school who are willing to give of their time and their talents to help someone else to feel better in life. Um, and so what students get out of it though is that they receive certificates of service, Westwood certificates of service, um, to, to keep track of the hours. Because what I've seen over the last year is that many students have done things but they forget, like for instance in our resume sessions, you know, I'll say, well, you know, what kinds of activities, what types of service, and, it, and they're kind of mm -hmm. scratching their head. And so what we're trying to do this year is help students um, come up with a portfolio where they're keeping track of everything that they do and every month we here at Westwood will be offering some type of service for students who are you know trying to get a certain number of mm -hmm. hours um, to to get involved to you know collect their hours and then as they build their resume they're building it with with things that they have done um, the second part of Westwood serves is that we're hoping that students will also gain those necessary soft skills mm -hmm. that will help them in their careers. You know, I tell students all the time, never underestimate the power of service because what it does is it allows them to build those interpersonal skills, communication skills, networking, those things that are going to be so vital when they, when they grow up and they, and they want to have um, careers. Mm -hmm. And so um, our ninth graders are building their resume now and, and even we have some middle school students who will be mm -hmm. working with us and I tell students it's never too early to start building your resume and preparing for your career so we're, we've incorporated all of that into work-based learning and we're so excited about our first Westwood Serves event this Saturday. Yeah. And, and the Westwood Serves is, gives us an idea to focus once a month on something special. It doesn't discount the fact we're still doing other things uh, throughout our school. But what excites me uh, is for our kids is that uh, through our core values, through our Westwood Way values, we talk about the way for our communities to remain great and to become even greater. It's, it's teaching our kids to be those servant leaders, to, to get out there and make sure they're providing the service. And it's not about giving money. Right. Right. It's about serving our community. That's and right. so I thank you for, for leading the way. And uh, we're certainly looking forward to Brett's Rainbow and the excitement that that brings. And, uh, you know, working with uh, children is uh, always a passion of mine. And, uh, you know, and I'm just so proud of our kids uh, and, and the call for action. And they, they took the call to Absolutely. do it. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you. This will be our second graduating class from Westwood High School. And we are looking for great things out of this class. They've been receiving special college career information information since seventh grade through a financial grant called Gear Up. Our Gear Up coordinator is Miss Susan Parker. Miss Parker, what activities have you planned for Gear Up for this year? We're going to continue doing research on different colleges. Um, while a lot of students have already applied to college, um, several of them are still trying to make decisions. Um, we're going to be doing research on different scholarships to help pay for the college, um, and also financial aid workshops and. Um, 
continuing to work on grades. Well, you know, I had the uh, the pleasure of, of attending the Gear Up conference and yes. uh, with you, and mm -hmm. and the things that they talked about that we're doing here are just phenomenal. And so we thank you for your hard work and what you mean to kids. Thank you. It's a the kids are awesome, and the school is fantastic. Well, great. Uh, and also joining us is Lisa Falkenberry, who is our college uh, specialist. And both of you have been working overtime with seniors on the college application process. Uh, Ms. Falkenberry, what do college look for in an application? They're looking for the student's academic record. They're going to first be looking at whether or not they meet the qualifications academically. But then they're also going to be looking at service and opportunities that the students have had and that they've taken to do things in the community, um, extracurricular activities, and other areas of their life outside of academics. So we talk about those three things here. We talk about how important it is to have a good academic record and do well academically, uh, find those leadership opportunities and those service opportunities. And I think that's uh, that both of y'all are doing that incredibly. One of the one of the big parts of the application process is uh, the letter of recommendation. How should students decide who and what teacher should write those letters? Actually, um, students need to think really hard about who they want to recommend them. Um, most colleges will state they want a guidance counselor or a math teacher or an English teacher. And I think it's a lot of times students think, oh, I'm going to go to the teacher that I like the most or that likes me the most. And they may not give the best um, recommendation um, because the recommendation needs to be focused on what they're looking for. Um, for instance, if they're interested in going into the medical field or the sciences, of course get a math teacher and probably a science teacher versus um, you know, a fine arts teacher who doesn't really know how they are in the science world. Yeah. And, you know, in addition to the application mm -hmm. and the, uh, the letter, uh, there's also, you know, sometimes a college essay that goes on. Yes. You know, what kind of things should students write about in those college essays? Well, most essays, mm -hmm. the prompts are specific mm -hmm. um, for the application. But then, so I guess the first response to that would be answer their question, answer mm -hmm. their question well. Um, and in doing so, tell about yourself, something that isn't going to be necessarily seen clearly on the application. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times they also will ask for a personal statement. And that is a real opportunity for students to kind of take all the masks and filters off and really show them who they are. Um, students get really nervous about that. Understandably, it's hard to think about how do you, how do you approach that. Mm -hmm. So I find that in working with students, one of the easiest things to do is just put the books away, put the current book away, just talk to me, you know, and that's what I tell them. Just talk to me, tell me your story. And I think when colleges have the opportunity then to see that, you know, you talk about it and kind of lay it out and then put it on paper um, and really show them who you are. That's awesome. And I'd like to add also that a lot of times the application might have an optional essay. Um, I think students need to grab that optional by the horns and actually do the essay. Mm -hmm. Tell them a little bit more about themselves because they need to take one step further than just the application and let them know, besides transcripts and the application, what, who are they and what are they about? Yeah. We kind of laugh about that. When it says optional, it's not really optional. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Well, that idea of optional does say something when you take the time to do it. Exactly. It says something mm -hmm. about yourself that you're mm -hmm. ready to go above and beyond. But I like the idea that, you're, that you both are talking about is this is another opportunity for the colleges to get to know something about our students that, mm -hmm. that maybe an application won't, uh, mm -hmm. you know, won't reveal. So. Exactly. And Mr. Schmidt, you'd be proud to know the number of kids who are actually doing all the essays. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. We look at them all day long. Mm -hmm. Well, that is great. Well, certainly you guys make a, a big impact here, not just for our seniors, but for all of our students, because that process starts the day they hit uh, Westwood High School's front door. Exactly. And so we thank you for the service. And, uh, you know, we encourage all of our students and parents to get to know both of you. And, uh, uh, because it is the, the first start in that process of getting them to become those uh, college graduates uh, mm -hmm. and we know that they're going to be successful. Exactly. So thank you for what you do. Mm -hmm. thank you. This has been our first We Are Westwood broadcast. Please let us know what you think. If there are any topics you would like us to explore, please let me know. My email address is rschmidt at richland2.org. Just please, you know, let us know what you think. This has been an exciting time for us to let our community know what great things are happening here at Westwood High School. Thanks and have a Red Hawk Day.